Hey guys, welcome back again. It was wonderful to note that all of you loved the first part of the chart patterns course. We just focused on continuation patterns. And as per your demand, here is the second part of this three video series. And as always, a great amount of effort has been put into making quality content for you. So make sure you like this video first. The target for this video is 1000 likes and please watch the video till the end and share it with your friends and fellow traders. And if you are new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and enable the bell notification so that you will never miss any upcoming uploads. Now in the last part, we talked about 5 different types of continuation chart patterns. However, in this video, we will talk about reversal chart patterns and we will not just talk about it, we will examine why these patterns work in the market and why you should trade them. We will discuss the four most common and most profitable reversal patterns along with their entry, stop loss and target criteria. And if you don't know what reversal patterns are, as the name suggests, these patterns signal that the existing trend in the market will most probably reverse or in simple terms, they predict that the market will take a U-turn in the opposite direction of the existing trend after the end of the pattern. Now most of these reversal patterns are formed as consolidation in between the trends. So it's like the market telling us that it is tired of going in a particular direction and is looking to move in the completely opposite direction after taking some rest. So in this video, I'll be discussing four reversal chart patterns and their counter patterns, starting with the head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulder patterns, followed by double top and double bottoms, then triple top and triple bottoms, and finally we will wind up with the rising and falling wedges. So without wasting any time, let's begin. The head and shoulders pattern is one of the most popular reversal chart patterns out there. And because it is popular, the chances of making a mistake is also high. Now let us understand what this pattern really implies. Actually the pattern consists of four different parts, the left shoulder, the head, the right shoulder and the neckline. Overall the pattern looks simple right? But what does it actually mean and why does it matter? Let's analyze this in greater detail. We will start from the left shoulder. The initial trend in the market is an uptrend where the prices rally is higher and then the market does a pullback or a correction and the left shoulder is formed as the market does a pullback. And at this point, there is no way to tell if the market will reverse because a pullback occurs regularly in a trending market and it may just be another swing low from which the prices can move higher. The market then trades above the previous swing high, forming a higher high. However, the sellers take control or resist the upward rally and push the price lower towards the previously formed swing low. Now the swing high formed as a result of this price action is the head of the pattern. Also the line connecting both the swing lows forms a support level called as the neckline. Now what we can observe here is that the uptrend structure of higher highs and higher lows is violated. But still, we cannot guarantee that a reversal will happen because the price might even trade sideways. Now once again from the neckline, the buyers make a final attempt to push the prices higher but they fail to even break above the previous high or the head of the pattern. And yet again, the sellers take control and push the price towards the neckline. This forms a lower high in compared to the previous high which indicates a shift in the sentiment towards bearishness. Now the only level that stands in favor of the bulls is the neckline which is also a support level. Or in other words, the neckline is the last line of defense for the buyers. And if the price breaks below it, the market could head lower and begin the start of a new downtrend. So basically the head and shoulder pattern signals a possible trend reversal as the buyers fail to push the prices higher. Are all head and shoulder patterns worth trading? Actually, there are a few things that you must seriously look at before you trade the head and shoulder chart pattern. These things are associated with how reliable is the head and shoulder pattern formed. Now what you need to understand is that not all head and shoulder patterns are created equal. Because how the right shoulder forms is a key criterion to whether you want to trade the breakout or not. For example, if you have a head and shoulder pattern that has a very long right shoulder, then you want to avoid buying the breakout. And why is it so? Because the price has moved a very long long distance from the highs of the right shoulder to the neckline of the support area which will attract more sellers on the way. So the market is likely to face a buying pressure due to the profit booking by the sellers and also from the traders who want to buy from the support level. Now this creates a strong buying pressure which will lead to an increase in the price and the pattern will fail. 
So make sure that the right shoulder is shallow and ideally it should stay below 50% of the head. Other than this, there are two more things you must pay attention to while selecting the best head and shoulder patterns. First one is the market structure and the second one is the duration of the pattern. Let me explain each one of them. It is true that head and shoulders is a reversal chart pattern but if the market is in a very strong uptrend, it is very unlikely that a simple chart pattern can reverse the entire up move. Instead, the market is likely to continue higher. Maybe the pattern can generate a short term retracement but not entirely a reversal. So make sure that you don't bet against a very strong trending market just because you have seen a head and shoulder pattern. Now the second factor is the duration of the pattern. A typical head and shoulder pattern can take 200 days, 20 days or even 20 minutes to form depending on the chart time frames that you follow. But with some common sense, it is very obvious that the pattern that takes 200 days to form is more significant than a head and shoulders that takes 20 days to form which is more relevant than a pattern formed in 20 minutes. And why you may ask? Because if the market breaks the 200 day pattern neckline, there will be more traders or buyers who bought at the support and most of them will keep their sell stop loss orders just below the neckline. Now these buyers will get trapped and they will rush for exit or their sell stop loss orders will be triggered on breakdown which will further increase the selling pressure. Now when you take the case of the pattern formed in 20 minutes, this may not always hold true because only very few people are aware of it and the pattern may not give you the desired result. So a head and shoulder pattern on a higher time frame and one that took more time to form has a higher chance of success. Now this does not mean you go short immediately when the price breaks the neckline. There are a few ways to trade the head and shoulder chart pattern in the best possible manner. Now I will start off with the trade entry techniques and there are four possible entry methods for this pattern. The first and most aggressive entry is when the price break down the neckline. Now the idea is to wait for the breakdown candle to close below the neckline and then take a short entry below the close or the low price of the breakout candle. Now the advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into a trade very early and perhaps you will get the best possible entry price but the drawback is that the price could reverse and give a false breakout and might even hit your stop loss. So the second entry technique is associated with a breakout following a build up of prices. Now build up means a tight consolidation of prices near an area of value prominently near a support or resistance level. You can learn more about this concept in the secrets of support and resistance in my price action course. In this case, we will wait for the market to form a tight consolidation near the neckline or support level. And if the market breaks down, you can reference your trade entry just below the close or the low of the breakdown candle. Now the advantage of this method is obviously the tight placement of stop loss and an improved reward to risk ratio which we will discuss in the next section and it also provides a good entry price. But the drawback is that the breakdown candle can be huge and you will be selling at a much lower price. Now you might be wondering what if I miss the breakout or what if the market doesn't form a build up and still continues to head lower, won't I miss out on the trade? Now this is a relevant question because build ups don't actually happen every now and then. So another common method is waiting for a primary pullback in prices. This technique lets you catch the price move even after a breakdown. Now here is how it works. So if the market breaks down without forming a build up, then we will wait for a primary pullback to occur, which is a temporary up move of prices with weak candles, which generally resembles a flag or pennant pattern, which you may obviously know how to trade. And eventually if the market does a pullback, then you can look to go short on the break of the previous swing lows or enter right away when the price starts moving lower. And as I have mentioned, the best pullbacks are those with shallow retracement and small bodied candles. But what if we get a steep pullback and with large bodied candles? What will we do then? Now if the pullback is deep, then we will wait for the price to retest the neckline or the previous support turn resistance level as per the principle of polarity. We have to observe if the price retests the neckline and then wait for a price rejection from the neckline in form of bearish reversal candlesticks like shooting star, bearish engulfing pattern, evening star etc. You can learn more about reversal trading using candlesticks in my price action course. 
and if you find there is a price rejection then you can go short on the very next candle now the retest technique lets you time your entry and even short the market at better prices but the downside is that the market will not always do a retest and you might miss out on the trade altogether Another important point to keep in mind is that the volume should decrease during the formation of the left shoulder and the head indicating a loss in the buying interest and it should rise during the formation of the right shoulder and also during the breakout confirming an interest in selling so make sure you use the right entry techniques at the right times now let us talk about the placement of stop losses with respect to our entry criterions As I have discussed multiple times, your stop loss should be at a level that if breached will invalidate your trading setup. Now since we are dealing with a head and shoulder pattern, your stop loss should be at a level that invalidates the pattern altogether. To be fair, if the price moves above the right shoulder, the pattern will get invalidated. So if your entry was aggressive as and when the price break down from the neckline, then you should set your stop loss at or above the right shoulder of the pattern. Now what if you took a short entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you get the freedom to place a much tighter stop loss, preferably just above the build up consolidation, which will boost your reward to risk ratio by some margin. Now let's say you missed both these entries and you shorted the market after the prices formed a primary pullback then set your stop losses above the highest price in the group of the pullback candles or just place it above the neckline if the pullback is formed very close to the neckline and the last method is if you have entered after a retest in this scenario the stop loss can be placed just above the highest wick of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place the stop loss above the right shoulder of the pattern and finally we will take a look at how to exit from our trade for maximum profit well there are three popular techniques that you can use the price projection method the trailing stop loss method and a combination of these methods now let me explain each one of them The price projection is a classical charting technique that determines where the move might end. Now it focuses on price exhaustion. The idea is quite simple. The prices will move a distance equal to the highest width of the pattern. Now in this case, the highest width of the pattern is from the neckline to the head. So all you have to do is to measure the width from the head to the neckline and then project this distance from the neckline towards the downside. The second method is more like trailing your stop loss to ride big trends. Now, if you have followed me on my last video, you know how to trail your stop loss to ride massive trends in the market. One way you can do this is to trail your stop loss with moving averages. The selection of moving averages will depend on the time frame that you're trading on. For short term trends, a 20 moving average will do the job, but for a medium term trend, a 50 moving average will be a good choice. and for a long term trend a 100 or 200 moving average is the best possible option the idea is to ride the trend until the price moves above the trailing stop loss where you can exit your position the last method uses a combination of both these techniques the idea is to exit half your positions at the price projection level and then ride the rest using a trailing stop loss by doing this you will be able to lock into some good profits and not fall prey to the market reversals Now I would like to add a few more points as to when and where to trade this pattern on the charts. So when you think about it, head and shoulders is a reversal pattern, but it is also a bearish breakout pattern. With that idea in mind, you can either trade this when the uptrend is weakening and you find a head and shoulder pattern that confirms the trend change, or you can also trade this pattern when the market is in a downtrend and the pattern appears as a temporary pause in the downward price action. Now by doing so, you are taking a trade in the direction of the trend and not against the forward prices. But make sure that you don't bet against a very strong uptrend just because you spot this pattern and it may not work in your favor then. Moving on, the inverse head and shoulders or inverted head and shoulders or reverse head and shoulders pattern is a bullish reversal chart pattern that signals that the buyers are in control. It is just like a mirror reflection of the head and shoulders pattern. So I won't be digging deep into the minute details of this pattern. Anyway, let's find out what inverse head and shoulder pattern really means. This pattern also has four parts. 
The left shoulder is the result of a pullback against the downtrend, either because of a profit booking or eager buyers stepping into the market. But the sellers are still in control as they push the prices lower. However, the buyers are also stepping in, which explains the stronger pullback to retest the previous swing high level, which forms the head of the pattern. From this, we can assume that the sellers are getting weak as they couldn't push the price lower. Instead, the buyers are getting stronger as they continue to push the prices higher, retesting the resistance area or the previous swing high which forms the neckline of the pattern. Now the sellers tried to push the price down one last time but they were met with the intense buying pressure thereby forming a higher swing low compared to the head of the pattern. Now this forms the right shoulder of the pattern and it tells us that the sentiment has changed from bearish to bullish. And if the price manages to break above the resistance, then the inverse head and shoulder pattern is confirmed and the market could continue higher. Now, you might be thinking of buying when the price breaks out of the inverse head and shoulders and gain some profits. But this is not easy because not all of them are reliable. What matters is the strength of the market structure and the duration of the inverse head and shoulder formation. So if the market trend is strongly bearish, the chances of reversal are quite dim even if the pattern forms and it could just be a short pause before the continuation of the trend. Now the other point is that the longer the inverted head and shoulder pattern takes to form, the more significant it is. This also means that the shorter the duration of the inverse head and shoulder pattern, the more likely it will fail, especially when you're trading it against the trend. Also keep in mind that how the right shoulder forms is also a key criterion for whether you want to trade the breakout or not. So let's say you have an inverse head and shoulder pattern that has a very long right shoulder, then you might want to avoid buying the breakout because the price has already moved a long distance from the lows of the right shoulder to the resistance area which attracts more buyers along the way. So the market is likely to face a selling pressure from the profit booking by the buyers and also from traders who want to sell at the resistance level. Now this will create a strong selling pressure which will lead to a price decline. So a rule that you can follow is that the right shoulder should be above 50% of the head of the pattern. Now let's talk about when you trade the inverse head and shoulder pattern. Even though this is a reversal pattern, the idea that inverse head and shoulder pattern is a bullish breakout pattern is more prominent. So it makes sense to trade this pattern when the market is in an uptrend. And when you trade the inverse head and shoulder pattern in an uptrend, you just increase your odds of winning because you are now trading with the trend and not against it. Another opportunity to trade this pattern is when you spot this pattern at the end of the downtrend and the inverse head and shoulder pattern acts as a confirmation that the existing downtrend is weakening and there is a possibility that the market might reverse and move higher. But make sure that you don't trade this pattern in a very strong downtrend because the possibility of trend change is very low in such instances. Now let's move on to learning how to trade this pattern when you spot one. We will discuss the entry criteria first. The most aggressive entry is when the price breaks above the neckline or the resistance. The idea is to wait for the breakout candle to close above the neckline and then take a long entry above the close price or the high price of the breakout candle. The advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into the trade very early and perhaps you will get the best possible entry price but the main drawback is that the price could reverse and give a false breakout and it might even hit your stop loss. The second entry technique is a breakout with buildup. Now this happens when we observe a tight consolidation of prices near the resistance level or neckline. So when you see a buildup at the resistance, it tells you that there is buying pressure willing to buy at higher prices despite profit taking and short selling from that level. Also, the traders who went short at that resistance level are likely to have their buy stop loss orders above the resistance level. So when the price breaks out of the resistance, these clusters of stop losses will provide fuel to push the prices even higher. And if the market breaks out above, you can straight away enter into a long trade or you can wait for the candle to close and enter above the close or above the high of the breakout candle. The advantage of using this method is obviously the tight placement of stop losses and an improved reward to risk ratio and also a very good entry price. But the main drawback is when the range of the breakout candle is very huge and you will be buying at a much higher price. 
Now what if the market doesn't form a build up or it forms a huge breakout candle and still continues to head higher. So if you miss both the above entries, the other method is to wait for a primary pullback in prices to happen. This technique helps you to catch the price move even after a breakout. So if the market break out without forming a build up, then we will wait for a primary pullback to occur, which is a temporary down move of prices with weak candles. And if the market does form a pullback, then you can look to go long on the break of the previous swing high or end the right away when the prices starts rising. And as I have mentioned, the best pullbacks are the ones with shallow retracement and small bodied candles. But what if we get a steep pullback with large bodied candles? What would we do then? So if the pullback is very deep, then we will wait for the price to retest the neckline or the previous resistance turn support level where we expect the buyers to come in. We need to observe if the price retests the neckline and if it does, we will wait for a price rejection from the neckline in the form of bullish reversal candlesticks like bullish hammer, bullish engulfing pattern, morning star, etc. And if you find there is a rejection, then you can go long on the very next candle. Now this retest technique lets you time your trade entry and even take up positions at better prices. But the downside is that there is no guarantee that the price will retest the level, especially if the market is in a strong uptrend and you might miss out on the trade altogether. Yet another important point to keep in mind is that the volume should decrease during the formation of the left shoulder and head, indicating a loss of interest in selling and the volume should rise during the formation of the right shoulder and also during the breakout, confirming an increase in the buying pressure. So make sure you use the right entry techniques at the right times. This is exactly where you should reference your stop loss. So if your entry was very aggressive as and when the price breakout from the neckline, then you should set your stop loss at or below the right shoulder of the pattern. Now what if you took a long entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you have the convenience of placing a much tighter stop loss, preferably just below the build up which will in turn improve your reward to risk ratio. Now let's say you have missed both these entries and you entered a position in the market after the prices formed a primary pullback. Then set your stop loss below the lowest price in the group of pullback candles including the EBIC or place it just above the neckline if the pullback form is very close to the neckline. Now the last method is if you are entering the trades after a retest. In this scenario, the stop loss can be placed just below the lowest week of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place your stop loss below the right shoulder of the pattern to save yourself from long wicks. Now we will take a look at how to exit from our trade for maximum profits. And as previously mentioned, there are three popular techniques that you can make use of. The price projection method, trading stop loss method and a combination of both these methods. The price projection helps determine where the price move might possibly exhaust. Now here's how it works. Just calculate the distance between the head and the neckline. Then project this distance upwards from the breakout point or neckline. This projected price point is where you should exit your trade. This price projection technique helps decide whether it's too late to enter a trade or not. And if the price is very close to reaching the price projection, then there's probably not much juice left in the move and you might want to skip the trade. But unlike the price projection technique, a trailing stop loss method does not use a fixed target profit. Instead, you trail your stop loss as the price moves in your favor so that you can ride the entire trend. So in order to do that, the first step is to decide on the type of trend you want to capture, whether it's a short term, medium term or long term trend. Then you can trail your stop loss with the appropriate moving averages like 20 period for short term, 50 period for medium term and 200 period moving average for long term trades. You will exit the trade only when the price closes below the moving average. Now the last method uses a combination of both these methods and you will exit half your positions at the price projection level and ride the rest using the trading stop loss. By doing this, you will be able to lock in some of the profits and not fall prey to the market reversals. Let's move on to the third pattern, which is the double top pattern. Now, this is one of the most common chart patterns that you will encounter. So this is a good thing because you will get a good number of trades. 
but this is also a bad thing because which trades to select will be a big concern. So we will discuss the basics of what a double top pattern is, how it works and how you should go about trading it. Now a double top is a bearish reversal chart pattern and it consists of three parts. The first peak or the first price rejection, the second peak or the second price rejection and the swing low forms a neckline or an area of support. Now what does the double top chart pattern really mean? The first peak is formed as a result of the market doing a pullback. At this point, you can't tell for sure if it will be a reversal as pullbacks are very common in trending markets from time to time. This is followed by a second peak where the prices get rejected in the same area again indicating that the buyers are not very keen to buy at higher prices. Now this is the first sign that the market could reverse lower and the break below the neckline will confirm our bias that the sellers are in control and the market could continue lower. So in a sense, the double top chart pattern signals a possible trend reversal as the market is unable to move higher. But keep in mind that not all double top chart patterns are created equally. For example, if you spotted a double top when the market is in a strong uptrend, the chances are the market will continue heading higher and the last thing you want to do is to go short or trade against the trend just because you have spotted a double top chart pattern. So there are two important things that you must pay attention to when trading a double top chart pattern. First of all, you need to see where and how the pattern forms. And secondly, how long does it take to form or the duration it takes to form the pattern. As I have already mentioned, you don't want to short a double top against a strong uptrend. And in addition to this, the space between the first and second peaks is also an important factor worth considering. This means you should probably avoid double tops with both their peaks very close to one another. Instead, we want to trade those double tops when the space is far apart from the first and second peak. And why does the space between the peaks have to be so far apart? The reason is quite simple. When there is more time and space between the first and second peaks, these swing levels or peaks become more significant as more traders will become aware of the price level. And as you may have already guessed, when a level receives more attention, it attracts more order flow as more traders would want to trade around that area. So when a large group of traders gets it wrong, it presents an opportunity that we can take advantage of. So beware of trading double tops and double bottoms when trading on an intraday basis over a shorter time frame. The higher the time frame and the larger the space between the swing highs, the greater the chances of a successful pattern. Now most trading gurus will tell you to short the double top breakout when the price breaks below the neckline and they will ask you to set the stop loss above the highs. However, there are two issues with this approach. First of all, after a strong move lower, the market could reverse higher proving to be a false breakout and thereby hitting a stop loss. Secondly, the stop loss is inherently very large and it does not offer a favorable reward to risk ratio on your trade. So there are a few ways that you can think of to fix this. Let's start by discussing the trade entry criteria first. Now, the most aggressive entry is when the price breaks below the neckline or the support level. The idea is to wait for a breakout candle to close below the neckline and then take a short entry below the close or the low price of the breakout candle. Now, waiting for the candle to close will ensure that the candle closes below the neckline and suggest that it is not a false breakout. The other advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into a trade at a very early stage but the drawback is that the size of the breakout candle can be too large sometimes which can badly reduce your reward to risk ratio. In some cases, it is always beneficial to wait for a price buildup to form near the neckline which acts as a support level in this pattern. Now we will take a short trade when the price breaks below the neckline after the buildup. This will ensure a higher probability of success because the trader who are long near the neckline of the support will have their stop loss orders placed below the support level and this will cut their losses if the market continues to head lower. And once price breaks below the support level, all these sell stop loss orders will be hit which will add further selling pressure thereby increasing the probability of success. On top of that, this trade will ensure a more favorable reward to risk ratio as you will have a much tighter stop loss. Anyway, the problem with this approach is that the breakout candle can be too large and also the fact that only a limited number of trades are available. Now what if you miss the breakout trade? Is it the end? 
Not really. You can still enter a trade if the prices form a primary pullback in the form of a flag or a pennant pattern. A primary pullback is nothing but a temporary up move of prices with weak candles, most probably due to profit booking. And a good pullback is always shallow and is associated with weak candles. But what if we get a steep pullback with large bodied candles? What will we do then? Yet again, we can look for a retest of prices back to the neckline which will now behave like a resistance level where we can expect to find the sellers to come in. So if the price do the retest, then we will wait for a price rejection from the neckline in the form of bearish reversal candlesticks like shooting star, bearish engulfing pattern, evening star etc. And if you find there is a price rejection, you can back yourself to take a short entry as the price begins to move lower. The retest entry provides a better entry price than any other entry methods but the downside is that the prices don't always give a retest and especially in strong trending markets you don't expect pullbacks or retests. Above all, make sure to confirm the breakouts with higher than average volumes and using other momentum indicators like RSI, MACD etc. Your stop loss should be at a level that if breached will invalidate your trading setup. Since we are trading a double top pattern, our stop loss should be at a level that invalidates the pattern altogether. In that sense, if the price moves above the swing high of the pattern, the pattern will be invalidated. But there is a small twist. Number one, if we do this, the stop loss can be too large and so the reward to risk will be very low. Secondly, the market can move up to the top of the resistance level and then reverse lower after hitting your stop loss just to form a triple top pattern and then move lower completing the pattern, which can be really frustrating. So what I recommend is to either place your stop loss at 50% level between the swing top and the neckline or if this distance is too large then set your stop loss with an adequate buffer using the ATR indicator just above the breakdown candle high. This could be your stop loss, your entry was very aggressive, that is you went short as and when the price broke below the neckline. Now what if you took a short entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you get the freedom to place a much tighter and hassle free stop loss, preferably just above the build up or consolidation which will boost your reward to risk ratio. Now let's say you miss both these entries and you shorted the market after the prices formed a primary pullback. Then you set your stop loss above the highest price in the group of the pullback candles or just above the neckline if the pullback is formed very close to the neckline. Now the last method is if you are entering after a retest. In such a scenario, the stop loss can be placed just above the highest wick of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place the stop loss at 50% of the width of the pattern. Now how to set your targets? As you may have guessed, there are three techniques to exit your trades, price projection, trailing stop loss and a combination of these two methods. Let me explain each one of them. The price projection focuses on price exhaustion. The idea is that prices will move an equal distance to the highest width of the pattern after the breakout. Now, the highest width of this pattern is from the neckline to the swing top or the swing high. So all you have to do is to identify the distance from the swing top to the neckline. Then project this distance from the neckline towards the downside. This will give you your desired profit target. The second method of trailing your stop loss is to ride big moves. We will make use of moving averages of different periods to do this. And the selection of moving averages will depend on the time frame that you are trading on. So for capturing short term trends, you use a 20 period moving average. For a medium term trend, you use a 50 moving average. And for a long term trend, you use 100 or 200 moving average. And we will exit the trade only when the price moves below the trailing stop loss. Now the last method uses a combination of both these methods. The idea is to exit half your positions at the price projection level and then ride the rest of the move using a trailing stop loss. By doing this, you will be able to lock into some good profits and not fall prey to the market reversals. Now, there is one more important piece of information that I want to share, which is associated with finding and trading double tops with a high level of accuracy and win rate, which involves the use of multiple time frame analysis. 
The concept is rather simple. The first step is to identify a downtrending market or a downtrending price action on a higher time frame depending upon your trading style. I have already made a video on time frame selection. You can watch that video to learn more. Now what you need to do is to wait for the price to approach an area of resistance on the higher time frame. Now if you find such a setup, move down to your lower time frame then look for a double top pattern on the lower time frame this is a very simple yet effective technique that allows you to time your trade entries at the absolute highs of the double top pattern which by the way is the best possible price level that you can get and is also a professional way of trading this pattern so please keep in mind that if you are not comfortable using this then you would be better off ignoring it you don't necessarily have to consider all the options just choose one or two that work well for you now we will focus on what a double bottom pattern is how does it work and how to approach it while trading it a double bottom pattern is a bullish trend reversal pattern and it is the exact opposite of a double top this pattern also has three parts it has a first low or first price rejection followed by a second low or second price rejection and also a neckline which is an area of resistance connecting the swing high in between now what do this part of the pattern indicate a first low is formed and the market declines lower forming a swing low and then moving higher at this point it is likely a retracement in the downtrend but then a second swing low gets formed when the market rejects the previous swing low level and retraces higher again so we can now assume that there is buying pressure but it is too early to tell if the market could continue higher we can only confirm the strength of the buying pressure when the price breaks above the neckline now when the price breaks above the neckline or resistance level, it signals the interest in buying and the possibility of the market moving higher. So in short, the double bottom pattern signals that the downtrend has possibly bottomed out and the price is about to move higher. Many traders make this mistake of buying the break of the neckline after a double bottom pattern is formed. But this won't always work in your favor because if the market is in a strong downtrend and it forms small double bottoms every now and then, the chances are the market is likely to continue lower. In addition to this, not all double bottoms are made the same. The time frame that we use for spotting the pattern and the space between the swing lows or the swing bottoms are also important factors worth considering. So a double bottom pattern formed on a higher time frame is more significant than one formed on a smaller time frame. Moving on to the entry criteria for trading. So an aggressive entry is when the price breaks above the neckline or resistance. The idea is to either enter a long position on the breakout which can often cause the false breakout problem or you can wait for the breakout candle to close above the neckline and then take a long entry above the close or the high price of the breakout candle. The advantage of this technique is that you will be able to enter into the trade early and might even get the best possible entry price but the drawback is that the breakout candle could be too large or even the price could reverse and give a false breakout and hit your stop loss. The second entry technique is a breakout with build up near the neckline. This happens when we observe a tight consolidation of prices near the resistance level or neckline. So when you see a build up at the resistance, it tells you there's buying pressure and people are willing to buy at higher prices despite profit taking or short selling from the level. Also, traders who short from the level are likely to have their buy stop loss orders placed above the resistance level. So when the price eventually breaks out of the resistance, all these clusters of buy stop loss orders will be hit and it will provide the boost that the price needs to move higher. And if the market breaks out of the neckline, you can enter your long trade just above the close or above the high of the breakout candle. Now the advantage of using this method is obviously the tight placement of stop loss and an improved reward to risk ratio and also a very good entry price. But the drawback is that the range of the breakout candle can be huge and you will be buying at a much higher price. Now what if the market does not form a build up or it forms a huge breakout candle and still continues to head higher. So if you missed both the above entries, the third method is to look for a primary pullback in prices to happen. This technique helps you to catch the price move even after a breakout. So if the market breaks out without forming a build up, then we will wait for a primary pullback to occur which is a temporary down move of prices with weak candles. And if the market does a pullback, then you can look to go long on the break of the previous swing high or enter right away when the prices start rising. 
and the best pullback should have a shallow retracement with small bodied candles. But sometimes we get a steep pullback to the neckline. This is called as a retest. So when the price retests to the neckline or now a support level, we expect buyers to come in. So we need to observe if price retests the neckline and if it does, then we wait for a price rejection from the neckline in the form of bullish reversal candlesticks like bullish hammer, bullish engulfing pattern, morning star, etc. And if you find there is a price rejection, then you can go long on the next candle. Now the retest technique lets you time your trade entry and even take up positions at far better prices. But the downside is that there is no guarantee that the price will retest to the level, especially in a strong uptrend and you might miss out on the trade altogether. Yet another important point to keep in mind is that the volume should increase during the breakout, confirming an increase in the buying pressure. So make sure you use the right entry techniques at the right times. Now let us talk about the placement of stop losses with respect to our entry criteria. The double top pattern becomes invalid when the price reverses from the neckline and closes below the swing low of the pattern. And if you were to place your stop loss based on this idea, then the stop loss would be too large and you will incur huge losses and moreover the price could reverse from the swing low and move higher again forming a triple bottom pattern. So where exactly should you place your stop loss? Now what I recommend is to either place your stop loss at 50% level between the swing bottom and the neckline or if this distance is too large then set your stop loss with adequate buffer using the ATR indicator just below the low of the breakout candle. This could be our stop loss if your entry was very aggressive that is you went long as and when the price breakout of the neckline. Now what if you took a long entry after a build up near the neckline? Then you have the convenience of placing a much tighter stop loss, preferably below the build up, which will in turn improve your reward to risk ratio. Now let's say you have missed both these entries and you have entered a position in the market after the price has formed a primary pullback. Then you can set your stop loss below the lowest price in the group of pullback candles including the week or you can place it just above the neckline if the pullback is formed very close to the neckline. And the last method is if you have entered after a retest. In this scenario, the stop loss can be placed just below the lowest week of the group of retest candles or you can be more conservative and place the stop loss at 50% of the distance between the swing low and the neckline of the pattern in order to save yourself from long wicks. And finally, we will discuss how to exit from our trade for maximum profits. And as always, there are three methods that we can make use of. The price projection, trailing stop loss and a combination of both. The price projection calculates the distance between the swing bottom and the neckline. So in the price projection method, you have to calculate the distance between the swing bottom and the neckline. Then project this distance upward from the breakout point or neckline. The projected price point or level is where you exit the trade. This technique will help you decide whether it is too late to enter a trade or not. For instance, if the price is close to reaching its price projection, then there is probably not much meat left in the move and you might want to skip the trade. But unlike the price projection technique, a trailing stop loss method does not have a fixed target. Instead, we trail our stop loss as the price moves in favor so that we can ride the entire trend. So the first step is to decide on the type of trend you want to capture, whether it's a short term, medium term or long term trend. Then you can trail the stop loss with the appropriate moving averages like 20 period, 50 period or 200 period moving averages respectively. And we will exit our trade only when the price crosses below these moving averages. The final method combines both these methods. You exit half your positions at the price projection level and write the rest using the trailing stop loss so that you will be able to lock in some profits and not lose money if the market reverses. Now same with the double top. You can use multiple time frames to filter for high probability double bottom setups. All you have to do is to identify a higher time frame support area, then move down to your preferred lower time frame and look for a double bottom pattern that leans against the higher time frame support level. By doing this, you can take a trade from the absolute low of the swing bottom, but do keep in mind that this is a more professional entry technique, so don't use it if you can't completely digest it. If you have understood the double top and double bottom patterns properly, then triple tops and triple bottoms are just a piece of cake. These are just extensions of the previous two patterns. The entry, exit and stop losses are the same. 
but what matters most is the formation of the third swing high or swing low respectively. Let's find out what these patterns signify. A triple top is a bearish reversal chart pattern that signals that the sellers are in control. The pattern starts with buyers in control as the price makes a swing high followed by a pullback. But the first sign of selling pressure appears as the price fails to break out of the prior high and the market makes a pullback again and forms a consolidation. This looks like a double top but this time instead of breaking below the neckline, the market attempts to break out higher once again and fails again. So there are three spikes visible or three failed attempts to break out higher. This looks like a triple top and is confirmed only when the price breaks below the low of the consolidation or the neckline support level. I won't be discussing the entry, stop loss and target criteria because you can follow the same rules as with the double top pattern. Keep in mind that no patterns, strategies or techniques work all the time. This includes even the triple top pattern. But the good news is that before the pattern fails, it usually leaves some clues. For instance, if the higher time frame trend is still an uptrend, then the triple top pattern formed on a lower time frame is most likely to fail. Now when talking about a triple bottom pattern, a triple bottom is a bullish reversal chart pattern and is quite the opposite of the triple top pattern and it signals that the buyers are dominant. Now the pattern begins with sellers pushing the prices down as the price makes a swing low followed by a pullback. But the first sign of buying pressure appears as the price fails to break out of the previous swing low. Now the market made another pullback and looked like a consolidation. This looks like a double bottom pattern. But instead of breaking above the neckline, the market attempts to move lower once again and fails to break the low once again. So there are three lows visible or three failed attempts to break out lower. Now this looks like a triple bottom pattern and is only confirmed when the price breaks above the high of the consolidation or the neckline resistance level. The entry, stop loss and target criteria are similar to the rules of the double bottom pattern itself. Now moving to the last category of patterns, the wedges. We will start off with a rising wedge. A rising wedge is a popular bearish pattern. This pattern starts wide at the bottom and then contracts as the price move upwards and the trading range gets smaller towards the top. This pattern forms when the price consolidates between upward sloping support and resistance lines where the slope of the support line is much more steeper than that of the resistance slope. What this implies is that the higher lows form much faster than the higher highs leading to a wedge-like formation. This also means that the selling activity is gaining more traction and the buying activity is getting weaker. Also, the contraction of the trading range from left to right indicates a weakening of the existing trading activity. But the rising wedge can be one of the most difficult chart patterns to accurately recognize and trade. While it is a consolidation formation, like most other patterns, the loss of the upside momentum on each successive swing high gives the pattern its bearish bias. However, the series of higher highs and higher lows keeps the traders guessing that the trend is still bullish. This is where the contracting range helps us the most. Moreover, to identify it as a rising wedge, the price should test the upward sloping support and resistance lines at least twice each. Now a shocking fact about rising wedge pattern is that it can be both a reversal or a continuation pattern. Now it depends on its position in the price chart. But the more important information is that regardless of the pattern being a reversal or continuation in nature, rising wedges are bearish. This is what we will focus on. The added advantage is that we can spot this pattern at the end of an uptrend or as a consolidation due to a short term profit booking during a downtrend. But actually, the bearish confirmation of the pattern does not come until the upward sloping support line is broken in a convincing fashion. Ideally, we expect the volume to decline as the prices rise and as the wedge forms and there should be an expansion or rise in volumes on the support line break which can be taken as a bearish confirmation. Now, you can also use momentum indicators like RSI or MACD to spot the shift in momentum. Anyways, when the price does break the support line convincingly, our bias is always towards selling on the breakdown. With a consolidation in prices, traders know that a big slash is on its way, so they expect a breakout either to the top or the bottom. So when the rising wedge is formed after an uptrend, it is referred to as a bearish reversal pattern, but if it is formed during a downtrend, it could mean a continuation of the down move. 
Now that we have learned how to identify a rising wedge, we can discuss how to trade the pattern. So I will discuss the entry methods, where to place the stop loss and how to set the targets. Now starting with the entry criteria, as it is a bearish pattern, we are only interested in the break below the upward sloping support trend line. You can take a short entry following a breakout of this level, that is you can enter at the moment when the price breaks below the support trend line or you can look to sell below the low price or even at the closing price of the breakout candle after it closes. The second method is to wait for a pullback or retest back to the breakout level and then take a short entry when the price moves lower or when the price moves below the breakout candle low. Now you are probably wondering which one is better? Well, there is no best approach. If you enter at the break of the loss, it could be a false breakout. But if it is a real breakout, it is the best possible price you can get. Alternatively, if you wait for a close below the loss, then you will reduce the chances of a false breakout. But if the breakout is too strong, you will end up entering at a much lower price. The same is the case with waiting for a pullback or retest which may not happen often if the market is trending strongly and as a matter of fact you will miss out on the trade completely. So it is up to you to decide the entry strategy and continue practicing it over a large number of trades. It is always recommended to confirm the validity of the breakout using volumes and other momentum indicators. So a higher than average volume can validate a breakout most of the time as it shows the interest of the market participants and low volume breakouts are most likely to fail. Also using momentum indicators like MACD, RSI can also help you identify a true breakout. I have made videos on all these topics so you can check them out. Let's now focus our attention on the criteria for setting the stop losses. How to set your stop loss when trading the rising wedge pattern. Now you don't want to set your stop loss at obvious levels like support and resistance, swing highs or swing lows etc. And why is that? Because you will get stop loss hunted easily. Because these are as obvious a level to you as it is to others, including the smart money. So how do you get a proper stop loss setup? And it's very simple. As I have mentioned over and over again, your stop loss should be at a level that if crossed invalidates your trading setup. So we are trading a rising wedge pattern here and the pattern is invalid if the price breaks and closes above the top trend line resistance. So you have to keep your stop loss above this resistance level. So there are still chances of long weeks which can take out your stop loss and then move in the desired direction. So to be extra safe, you have to give your trades more breathing space by setting your stop loss some distance away from the market structure using an indicator like ATR. So you have to set your stop loss 1 ATR above the most recent swing high level. Let's learn how to set a target for the rising wedge pattern. Now there are many ways you can cash in your winners. And one of the most common approaches is to have a predetermined profit target. Now the target can be measured by taking the distance of the back of the wedge or the widest portion of the wedge from the support to the resistance level and then extending this distance down from the trend line breakout point. You can also choose to trail your stop loss until the market takes you out of the trade. Now why is this a better option? Think about this. The rising wedge pattern usually appears in a downtrending market or at the end of an uptrend. In such conditions, there is a lot of potential for the trend to continue and the only way to ride it is to trail your stop loss. Now to trail your stop loss in the best possible manner, you can use moving averages or Chandler stops and only exit the trade if the market closes above it. Moreover, it is much better if you use a combination of both the price projection method and the trailing stop loss method so that you can gauge the move using the price projection method so as to lock in part of your profits there and then ride the rest of the position using your trailing stop loss thereby not impacting your psychology and avoiding any losses due to reversals. Now moving on to the final chart pattern of this video, the falling wedge. Falling wedge chart pattern is like a counter pattern to the rising wedge. It is created when a market consolidates between two converging support and resistance lines. For a falling wedge, the support and resistance lines have to point in the downward direction or they should be sloping down. And the resistance level have to be steeper than the support level. The pattern generally starts wide at the top and contracts towards the bottom as the price moves lower. This sort of price action forms a cone-like shape that slopes down as the swing highs and swing lows converge. 
as the price continues to slide down it will lose momentum and it signals that the buyers are beginning to step in and are slowing the rate of the price decline now in contrast to patterns like symmetrical triangles which have no definitive slope or bias the falling wedges should slope down and we have a bullish bias now as with the rising wedges the falling wedges is also one of those challenging patterns to trade the falling wedge is seen as both a bullish continuation and a bullish reversal pattern which give rise to some confusion in the identification of the pattern now both scenarios contain different market condition that must be taken into consideration but the differentiating factor that separates the continuation and reversal pattern is the direction of the trend when the falling wedge appears a falling wedge is a continuation pattern if it appears in an uptrend and it is a reversal pattern if it appears in a downtrend however this bullish bias cannot be realized or confirmed until the downward sloping resistance line breakout occurs convincingly by convincing i mean the volume should decline as the pattern progresses from left to right or simply the volume should contract with contracting prices showing a weakening of the existing price trend and the breakout above the resistance line should be accompanied by higher than average volumes indicating a rise in the interest among market participants now you can also make use of momentum indicators like rsi macd etc to confirm the reliability of the pattern now we will talk about the entry criteria so how do you better time your entry The first approach is to go long when the price breaks above the resistance trend line. All you need to do is to place a buy order above the resistance line and you will be immediately long when the price breaks out above the level. And if the breakout is real, this is one of the best prices to enter. But this is a very risky method and chances are it might be a false breakout. Now this next method is similar to the previous approach. The only difference is that you wait for the price to break and close above the trend line resistance. you can take a long entry above the breakout candle highs once the candle closes now this will reduce the likelihood of a false breakout but if the price momentum is strong you will enter your trade at a much higher price now if you are an experienced trader then you can even enter the market as the price pull back or retest back to the upper trend line of the pattern this can help you enter the trade even if you miss the breakout move and it offers a better price entry than waiting for the close of the breakout candle but the issue with this approach is that market may not give a pullback or retest every time so once again you can choose the entry type that you like based on whether you are conservative or aggressive in your approach but make sure to validate the breakout with volumes and other momentum indicators to see if there is actually an interest in the market participants to take the prices higher now how to set up proper stop loss so that you don't get stopped out too early now it doesn't matter whether you are trading breakouts or pullbacks because the concept is the same your stop loss must be at a location that if breached will invalidate your trading setup This means if the market hits the stop loss you will automatically know that you are wrong so a stop loss below the resistance level is not a good idea where is then think about it where is the ideal place to set your stop loss so that if the market reaches it you know the falling wedge pattern is invalidated since the pattern forms higher swing lows and if the price moves below the recent swing low or break below the downward sloping resistance trend line then we can be sure that our analysis was wrong so this is exactly where you need to keep your stop loss that is just below the swing low or the support level now you can give the price some breathing space by adding one atr buffer below the recent swing low or the support i hope this is clear now how to cash in your winners now one of the most common approaches is to have a predetermined profit target target can be measured by taking the width of the top of the wedge or the widest portion of the wedge from the support to the resistance level and then extending this distance upward from the trend line breakout point you can also decide to trail your stop loss now the trailing stop loss helps you ensure you ride the entire trend now to trail your stop loss in the best possible manner you can use moving averages or chandler stops and only exit the trade if the market closes below it and if you are using the moving averages use 20 50 or 200 period moving averages depending on whether you have a short term medium term or long term trade objective moreover it is much better if you use a combination of these two methods 
so that you can gauge the potential of the move beforehand using the projection method just to lock in part of your profits there and then write the rest of the position using the trailing stop loss method thereby not impacting your psychology and avoiding any potential losses due to reversals now that is all the major reversal patterns in a single video. I hope this video helps you understand the logic behind each pattern and if you find this video useful then please do like this video and I need at least 1000 likes on this video then only will I post the third part of this series because it takes a lot of time and effort to make them understandable. So share it with your friends and fellow traders and make sure to learn and put in the effort to identify these patterns on the chart and back to them on multiple charts to see which ones work for you. Do make sure to subscribe to the channel and enable the bell icon to get all new video updates. I will see you guys in the next video. Till then, see you.